guys, today I'm going to do the field test for the Sakura, yeah, the field test for the Sakura Koi coloring brush pen, watercolor marker. <sighs> for these things. I'm doing the field test for these. Uh, you can find more about these markers on my blog, natosoup.blogspot.com. Um, and I have another video where I did a swatch test, and both of these videos are for the larger blog post. So I'm going to be coloring this picture of Kara, my little girl character, she's seven inches tall, that I already inked, and it's on watercolor paper, and I already taped it down, and I already made um, a palette out of masking tape. I probably could use the glass of my desk, but I really don't want to. And I have my swatch book over here, and my water, and a couple of brushes. So, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get started, and, um, I, I'm not sure because I don't think I've really done speed tests, I mean, fill tests, before with just, um, just recording it. I usually do it through photos, and that's a lot of effort on my part. It, it takes a lot of time to do and to write it, and I'm trying to find ways to keep the content quality up while reducing the workload for me. So, I don't know. I'll figure this out. I might talk the entire time. We'll see. So, in the um, swatching video, I showed you guys that I had several colors that function pretty well as skin tones. Let's see if I can pull them out for you. Uh, Naples Yellow is a pretty good skin tone. Coral Red is good for blush. Woody Brown and I want to say raw sienna and dark brown are good for darker skins or for adding freckles or for doing highlights. So those are the skin tones I'm going to be using in this piece. I, I know that in the 12 set, light orange looks like it would be a good orange, I'm sorry, pale orange looks like it would be a good orange, but it's not. It's actually a bright yellow orange, so it is a bad pick for skin, I mean. Um, and uh, the Sakura Koi watercolor brush pins do have a blender marker. Um, it seems to perform a little bit better than the Tombow ABT with these markers. I'm not really sure what's inside of it. I'm guessing it's a combination of glycerin and water, which is uh, pretty commonly used binders, but I could totally be wrong about that. So I'm going to go ahead and get started for you guys, and um, I'll probably be taking photos as I go since my readers said they enjoy a com they would enjoy a combination of photo blog posts and video blog posts. So if I ever if I get really quiet for a while, it's probably because I'm taking pictures. So I think I'm going to start with Naples Yellow. And I think I'm going to start by applying it onto my side palette and then dipping a brush in clean water and putting down a first layer. And doing it this way, the color is very, very, very pale. So I can see that either lots of applications are going to be necessary to get the color I want or I'm going to be applying it directly to the skin. I think this is actually the first time I've ever done all major parts of the review, except for maybe the overview, um, on with like video segments. So that should be interesting. Um, I hope this method works pretty well, the combination of video and photos. And I'm going to try to keep it as edit-free as possible because my editor has made it known that he it's a lot of effort <laughs> to do the uh, like the marker watercolor marker tutorial I did for you guys a while back that took him a lot of effort it took me a lot of effort too but he spent longer editing than I spent recording so I'm gonna have to try to have some consideration for his time the easiest videos to edit are just like straight shots where um, 
I'm talking the whole time and you don't have to edit anything out and you don't have to put any music in. And I, some of the more popular, that I've noticed, some of the more popular illustrators on YouTube tend to treat it like a vlog. So, um, I guess that's something for me to keep in mind. I've gotten really used to uh, a separation between my, my professional, my working life, and um, my private life. So, it might be a little bit difficult for me to open up. So that's the second layer of the um, Naples yellow. So I think for my third layer, I'm going to go ahead and apply it directly on the Kara skin. And I think, hmm, all of the purples I have, I have like two, I have a a dark purple and I have a like a magenta color over here and they both one seems too dark and the other one seems too hot for I guess I could do the shadow with the, the light blue sorry if I seem kind of tired I just had friends stay the weekend and while I had a really good time I didn't get I didn't get any work done and uh, I'm kind of trying to play catch up I ended up scanning all of my Inktober illustrations today, and that took a while, as well as some other watercolor illustrations I had done a while back that needed to be scanned, and uh, thumbnails for chapter six of Seven Inch Kara. It's funny how scanning just seems to take forever when you've got a lot of it. Okay, so now I'm applying the Naples yellow directly to the paper, and I'm going to try to blend it out with the water brush, and maybe with the other hand I might try to blend it out using the, oh, that works out pretty well. Uh, I'm going to try to blend it out with the colorless blender. You know, these are actually pretty decent little watercolor markers. I kind of like them. I mean, a lot of a lot of what I recommend is based on my own preferences. So it doesn't make it the best, but just makes it the best for me. Uh, I kind of like them a little bit better than. Hmm, that seems gummy to me. I'm not so hot on that. Um, I kind of like them better than the clean color brush pen that a lot of people were or are very excited about and I, part of it is it, they're cheaper um, while you can only get them open stock from the Sakura website they, their, their shipping is very quick there's no back order so if you want some affordable decent um, watercolor brush pins that come in a lot of color a lot of bright colors you might be better off with these over the clean color brush pins and these are made by Sakura of America they also make micron pins which I think a lot of people are familiar with for like Zentangles or if you draw comics um, or if you were ever involved in like the Artist Alley kind of community you pro you, you've at least seen them around they also make uh, Sakura Koi pan watercolors which I use for my convention watercolors and they make tube watercolors which I've never used I have no idea if they're any good I think these are, are pretty decent so far, and uh, they're fun to use. They lay down color well, and they blend out well, which is important. Who knows, maybe I will bring these to cons instead of the watercolors. Mm. Actually, I mean, I could do it in pencil, but I actually like letting my ink dry for 24 hours, and that would kind of put a... a a damper in my ability to do Sunday commissions or do commissions for people who are only there on Saturday. 
So, um, as you can see, the Naples yellow it is actually kind of a, once you, once you layer it, it is actually yellow. Like, so now Kara looks a little bit neon, and that's my fault. I should have uh, maybe switched to another color. It doesn't look bad. She just looks, um, she has a yellower cast to her skin tone than I normally think of her having. So I think the next color I'm going to do is going to be, what's this, coral red, maybe. Although I also have woody brown. See, the, well, you can't really see it, but the caps don't really indicate the color of the ink inside. It's more indicative of the color of the ink inside, kind of, sort of. Not really. I mean, so that's, that's kind of like a, a tick off, but it's not a big, big deal. Let's see, which one are you? I'm looking for dark brown right now. That's for Raw Sienna. So how have you guys been? What's your weekend been like? I went to GMX on Sunday. Um, I had tabled at GMX last year, and my experience as an artist was actually really poor last year, and I had a lot of complaints, but it seems like they addressed pretty much all of those complaints with the Artist Alley this year, so I think I'm gonna put in for next year. It's always really exciting when a convention makes like positive strides. There are a lot that just don't really care about their artists. I guess they figure they're always going to get other artists who are going to sign up. And I mean, with that said, a couple of the artists in the alley said they had read the post I'd written about GMX and applied anyway. So I mean, even if I like, I'm I'm glad they went because GMX had changed and the artist alley had changed hands, and like they didn't they didn't deserve to be punished if they were going to make strides forward. Um, but even even with people who were giving honest opinions, they still made their own decision, which I think is great. I mean, um, that's partially why I write those reviews, is to hold shows accountable for how they treat artists, and to give artists some, I mean, I'm just one person, and I only write about the shows I attend, but to give artists some, just some additional information that wasn't, that isn't always available because some artists are afraid of the repercussions that are going to come from speaking negatively about a show. There are shows that'll, that will blacklist people. And I'm really happy that GMX took what I said and made, or I mean, maybe other artists were saying this too. They, I think they handed out a questionnaire after the show was over and I remember, I mean, I think I probably filled it out. Pretty sure they did actually. So I'm glad they took their artists into account instead of just dismissing what they had to say. I mean, there are some people I think who do Artist Alley just to make money, but I mean, there are there are quicker ways to make money for a lot of people, especially if you're selling original stuff. There there are quicker ways to make money than the artist alley. Hello, cat. There are easier ways. I mean, most of us who do it are doing it because we are passionate about drawing or knitting or sculpting or, uh, I guess, making stuff out of perler beads or uh, glass, stained glass stuff or chain mail. Like there's there's a reason why people take it like why they, they go and they sit in the alley all day and risk maybe not making any sales or maybe not covering costs. So I think it's great when con Ah it's a mistake. That's a mistake alright. I was trying to see if I could put like a lighter shade of blue because I don't have a very good purple for this and now Kara looks like Hitler and uh, I'm gonna see if I can oh okay all right okay that's like slightly less horrible and Hitlerish and the paper is also getting kind of chewed up
because I'm applying directly to the paper and it's a uh, cotton based watercolor paper and sometimes uh, marker nibs chew those kinds of paper up you really if you're gonna and I do this on purpose because I want to know um, but man now it really does look like a bad mustache decision on her part um, I usually pick a cotton paper kind of on purpose and also because I have a lot of I, yeah I have a lot of it but if you're going to use watercolor markers I really recommend you use a uh, paper like a wood pulp based um, watercolor paper rather than a cotton one because it's less prone to shredding and you should also if you can wait for things to dry before you directly apply with the pens That blue is going to be the most, the highest point of contrast on her face, and that's when you know a mistake is a bad one. Because you can kind of, you can kind of fudge things if it's not the highest point of contrast on the face. If it's the highest point of contrast, it's a problem. I mean, really, that's that's not good. Mm, and now I'm like, do I fix it or do I let it stay the way it is? Do I deal with the shame? Just fixing. Don't let me regret this. So blending with the colorless blender does not work the way it does with Copics. No surprise. I mean that's alcohol based and this is water based. Um, they're very different medium. They react differently. I was just kind of hoping it would like water down the, the color a bit. Like if I'd applied it with a wet brush. I gotta leave. I gotta leave that alone. It's like a scab. It's not gonna get better if I keep picking at it. Oh, and I'm supposed to be taking pictures of of my progress. And Naples yellow is such a yeah, it's such a yellow it, uh, in terms of like a neutral skin tone. It's more neutral than most yellows, but it's more yellow in application than I thought it was going to be. That it kind of grays out the blue, which is good. Like that, that blue is a problematic blue. See if I can dab some of it up. I'm sorry I'm so low key. I'm just kind of tired. I think I probably spent all of my emotional energy hanging out with my friends, which is good, right? Like, they came a really long way to see me, so that was a good treat. Saying there isn't much left for the video. Okay, that's like the best I could do. Try to get a photo of it. And you can also warm up blues like this a little bit. I ought to, I really ought to leave that area under her nose alone. It's like picking at a zit or something. It's going to drive me nuts. It's all I'm going to be able to see. I should probably apply a richer color for the skin, the shadows on her skin because that blue is like zombie blue. I would recommend if you're getting these and you want to render figures and you see the mistake I made and you're like, hmm, that's, that's not good, that you get a violet instead of a magenta. Sometimes magentas, um, they look intense on the cap or they seem like they would be intense on the online swatch, which is what I had to go by. Um, and they're not, and that's what I was kind of banking on. I was kind of banking on. Also, you can see the color is separate. Oh, hmm. let me pull in for you. 
You can see the color is separating on her wrist right there, right here. This is going to be a, a something. I have just been, like, the last field test I did for you guys was with the pigment markers with all the different papers. At least for me. For you, it might end up in a different uh, order. And it just turned out, I got I was fighting with it the whole time. I was really not, from an artist standpoint, I was like, this is what I've created is not, I can't use this for anything. And this is kind of along that path. I really ought to just like make my piece with her skin rather than like trying to fight with it. You know, it's funny, I have this the basic set, and I'm like hardly using it at all. I mean, even as I'm like looking over my colors and thinking about what I'd like to do, my plans don't necessarily involve the colors that I bought the 12 pack of. And that seems to be really common for me. I don't really like um, basics packs. I find them like really hard to use. Hmm. These also have a tendency, once you, if you put down color on top of it, it has a tendency to like displace the color that I really don't like. Uh, and that, that is like a thing that happens with some brands. I just, it really bugs me. though I've made her skin into like a hot mess. I overworked it. So the blue, the blue is a mistake. Don't make my mistake, make your own better mistakes informed by my decisions, my poor decisions. Dang it, that's not really the color I wanted. use it anyway. Ah, oh, actually it is the color I wanted. Ha ha, thank you. Thank you. Oof. Hopefully, like I said, you guys can learn from my mistakes. That's something else I, I noticed is like if artists are having, I don't know, maybe I haven't seen enough YouTube videos, maybe there are artists who like, as they're struggling with something, they're like, and I'm doing this wrong, so don't do that, and I'm doing that wrong, so don't do that, like, I think it is important if, to learn from mistakes, both your own and other people's if you can, so, uh, I think it's good to make mistakes on camera, I think it's kind of sad that with the way internet culture is, failing publicly is worse than in many instances, you're like punished worse than ever trying, than not trying at all. Like the fact that you failed gets you more derision than the fact that you were too scared to ever try. Not that I think if you are afraid to try something, you should be treated poorly. I wasn't saying that. I just mean like, it's more like a ha ha mentality. Oh, you thought you were so good. Ha ha. No, you're not. Um, I think it makes people afraid to to fail publicly. I think it makes artists hesitant to post things that don't, didn't go very well. And I mean, you know, it would be nice if, I don't even know if I can say it would be nice. I don't really think it would be nice if we all had perfect galleries. I personally think it would be nice if there were some swaps in there too. So you could, you could see the artists actually learning rather than just like all of these perceived perfect illustrations. I mean, I think the last vestige of, like, being allowed to make accidents is kind of the Bob Ross videos that have been circulating on YouTube, and someone was doing a live stream with them, and I don't, I'm not sure about the legality of that, but 
I think it's great that people are revisiting his work because he's a big proponent of like kind of embracing your the things that didn't go the way you planned for them to go. I think that's important for artists and illustrators of all ages to to be encouraged with. I mean, when I was younger, there was an artist I admired who said that if he failed, if he didn't like how something turned out, he didn't erase. He just, like, completely redrew it. And, I mean, he wasn't a comic artist. He was, um, like, a, a fine art kind of illustrator. And I, at first I thought, oh, he's so wise. That's such a good idea because you're getting all this extra drawing time and you're getting in all this practice. You're going to be that much stronger for it. And then it's like, well, if you're, if you're just practicing, I understand that. And that's why I draw with pen and color pencil a lot is to, like, lock me into something, no nitpicking forever. But if you have a deadline, if you have to produce a thing for someone, you can't spend that time redrawing the thing eight times just because one little thing is off. So you either have to make your peace with that one little thing. Um, oh, speaking of, I went out of the lines right there. If I can pull it out. I'm getting a red flashy thing and I'm not super sure if I know what that means. I think it means I'm probably out of recording time, which isn't good because I'm not super sure where my other... Okay. So I'm going to add freckles in and unfortunately areas where the paper got abraded by the pen surface they tend to uh, feather out more. And I'm using raw sienna for her freckles. There has to be a better way to use these markers. I think I'm probably just using them wrong because the cover of these, even though they say they're watercolor brush pins, these are dry applications where you're applying layers of color um, without a whole lot of additional water. So the fact that I'm trying to use them like watercolors is probably causing me a lot of problems and a lot of frustration. And that's a shame because it means I have to do another. I might have to do another. I might decide to do another field test. And I'm finally using one of the 12 colors from the 12 color set I bought. I don't know. I think it's kind of frustrating when watercolor markers can't be used both as markers and as watercolors, but these were fairly inexpensive watercolor markers, so I think it's also unfair to hold them to too high a standard. I also, I think I'm just missing like the big memo that I'm using these things or testing these things wrong. And I do my research beforehand with the products, and if a company has a suggested usage, I will usually try to test on that first before I try other things. Okay, so that looks pretty dry. Dry enough to add another... The nice thing about using a brush is you can get a less, like, uniform, intentionally less uniform application that looks more like actual watercolor um, by
apply very neat amount of water on your brush and that's something that you wouldn't have access to if you were just applying these brushes the colors one on top of another there is some color displacement when you layer different colors on top of each other uh, so that's something to keep in mind simplified is probably simple is probably better with these markers they don't take layering as well as other brands do and there are some difficulties in blending so if you're not used to working with them it might be smart to go in with kind of a game plan Alright, so when I first, the first set of Koi brushes I got, I swatched on one sheet, and then another set came in and I swatched them on the next sheet. These two colors, while the caps look really different, they also look very different from their inks. So this is rose red, which is not, I mean it's a magenta color, and I assume that this color, which belongs to rose red, was actually this color, because they're closer than the other one is, but it's actually this purple here, which worked would have worked a lot better as a shading on the skin than the light blue that I use, which caused so many problems for me. So the fact that the caps aren't really anywhere near close to the color of the ink inside is actually a really big problem, especially if you're working, if you, you have enough markers that you can't have all your swatches on a single sheet. And one of the solutions to that problem is you um, you apply a little bit of the original color and the watered down color to a piece of like sticker paper and you apply that to the cap so you can tell. But I think doing that is kind of a crutch. I really feel like the marker cap should be more indicative of the ink that's inside the markers. So that's a mark off um, from these. The gray is such a light gray that applying it to the side palette first and then applying it onto the paper, you can barely see it at all. And I'm just trying to save the paper from getting torn up by the nib pulling too much. So now there is Hardly there, but they are gray, and I guess I'll go over it directly with the marker after it dries. Okay, that initial layer is dry, so I can go in with the gray, which is still pretty, pretty faint. And it's already, even though I'm trying to only work in one direction, and I'm trying to be limited in how many times I go over something, it's still pretty, it still wants to pill a little bit. I think, I think you can become proficient with using these. I just think it requires practice that I don't have because I'm used to other water-based markers, water, I'm sorry, watercolor water-based markers that don't have some of the issues that these have that I'm struggling so much with. If you like more muted colors, I would say skip the 12 pack because it's all very bright colors that I'm having a hard time using together. Um, so you may find them difficult to use together as well.